Welcome to the TaxWise Preparing Returns module. In this lesson, we'll discuss entering taxpayer data in a return. When preparing returns in TaxWise, you'll begin with the main information sheet. This is where you can enter most of the taxpayer's basic information, such as their names, social security numbers, address, and phone numbers. Click any of the fields to make it the active field and then type the information required. Completing a field, you can press the tab key to move to the next line and continue by entering the taxpayer's birth dates and their occupations. Remember, any line that has a yellow underline, such as the age for federal tax purposes, you should not type any information, but instead let TaxWise calculate that data. Scroll down to the taxpayer information section, and here you can select the checkboxes to indicate whether or not we are excluding any income from Puerto Rico, whether or not the taxpayer, spouse, or dependents received insurance through the healthcare marketplace, and whether anyone on the return sold, received, exchanged, or handled any virtual currency. Our administrator has already marked no for the Puerto Rico income exclusion and for virtual currency in the tax form defaults, so we'll only need to answer the healthcare marketplace question. For this lesson, we'll select no. You can also indicate in this section whether the taxpayer or spouse is blind or totally and permanently disabled, or if either the taxpayer or spouse passed away during the tax year. For this lesson, we will not mark any of these selections. Next, we'll continue down the form to the filing status. And since we entered a spouse on this return, we'll select the checkbox for married filing jointly. Continue scrolling down the form. In the line six exemption section, notice the checkboxes for whether or not the taxpayer or spouse can be claimed on another person's return, or if you're using head of household status and claiming a non-resident alien spouse. Select any of these checkboxes if appropriate, and for line C, you'll also need to enter the spouse's first and last name and their social security number or ITIN. For this lesson, we do not need to select any of these checkboxes. Tap through or select the first line in the dependent section to enter a dependent's name, date of birth, and social security number, and notice that TaxWise calculates the age. Then in the relationship to you column, you'll click the drop down arrow and select the correct relationship from the predefined list. For this lesson, we'll click Sun. From the months and home predefined list, you can select the number of months from zero through 12 or Canada or Mexico if the dependent resided in those locations. And for this lesson, we'll click 12. Next, you'll select the code from the drop-down list, and this can be code one, child who lives with you, two, child who does not live with you due to divorce or separation, three, other dependents, or four, non-dependents. In this case, we'll select code one. If you would like to claim dependent care credit for this child, or if you think the return will qualify for earned income credit, you can select the DC or EIC checkboxes next to this dependent. TaxWiles will then load Form 2441 or the Schedule EIC, depending on which boxes you select. Depending on the relationship status and the age for this dependent, TaxWiles will automatically select the Child Tax Credit or the Other Dependent Credit checkbox. You can also enter an identity theft PIN for this dependent if the IRS has assigned one to them. In the State Information section, you can select the checkbox to indicate that you are not preparing a state return, or select the correct field and type the state initials for full year resident, part year resident, or non-resident states. Then in the type of return section, you can choose between a bank product return, e-file only, or a paper file. Our administrator had selected bank products and Republic Bank in our tax form defaults, but for this lesson, we'll change the type of return to e-file only and remove the bank. Continue scrolling down to indicate if the taxpayer would like to use the fee collect service, if they would like to purchase Protection Plus, and you can enter their bank account information if they'll be receiving a direct deposit or providing an ACH debit. In the Versicom section, the taxpayer can opt in to receive either email or text message alerts regarding their refund status. If you as the preparer have enrolled to offer this service. The self-select and practitioner pin section is used to finalize the return. So for more information on this section, please review the lessons in the TaxWise electronic filing module. Below the self-select and practitioner pin, in the identity verification section, select the checkboxes to indicate how you verified the taxpayer's identity and what proofing level was used. 
If the taxpayer or spouse has an identity theft protection pin from the IRS, enter the pin in the taxpayer or spouse's field. If the taxpayer is allowing another person to discuss the return with the IRS, enter the third party designee information. And in most cases, the preparer information will already be listed from the tax form defaults, but if not, you can enter your assigned preparer ID and any additional information that does not automatically calculate. Next, we'll click the 1040 page one in the forms tree. Notice the top section of this form is completely recalculated and all of the information is filled in based on what we've been typing on the main information sheet. TaxFoss will also carry this information to other locations in the return where it's required. Then scroll down to the income section. Some of the lines here are direct entry, but many are calculated or have links to other forms where you can put more information about that income type. Click line one and click the link icon to display the list of forms you can link to to continue entering information. For this lesson, we'll select a new W-2 and click OK. Select the checkbox indicating whether this W-2 belongs to the taxpayer or spouse. And note that TaxFoss calculates the employee's name and social security number. Then select the checkbox to verify that the address shown on the W-2 matches what is listed on the form here, or if you need to make changes. Then in section B, we can begin entering the employer identification number, skip the name code field, and begin typing the employer's name and address in section C. TaxWAS will then calculate the name code. When you type the wages in box one, TaxWAS calculates boxes three, four, five, and six automatically. However, there is a checkbox that you can select if you want to take these calculations off and enter this information manually. Scroll down and complete any information on boxes 7 through 14 as shown on the taxpayer's W-2. Then on line 15 you can enter the state initials and the state ID number. And when you enter the state initials on line 15, TaxWise automatically calculates the state wages in box 16 and you can enter the state tax withheld. Let's return to 1040 page 1 and we'll scroll back down to the income section. And we can see that the amount of income has flowed back to 1040 page one. Continue entering or linking to other income forms to complete the rest of the income information. Then we'll click 1040 page two and review the calculated information in lines 12 through 16. In the payment section, we can see the amount of withholding we added to our W-2, as well as add any additional types of payments you've made. At the bottom of page two, you can review the refund or the balance due, and you can also see this information in the refund monitor at the top of the forms tree. Next, click Schedule 1. Select the yes or no checkbox to indicate whether or not you itemized deductions last year, and for this lesson, we'll select no, and you can continue adding any additional types of income or linking to the appropriate forms to complete this information. At the bottom of this form, we can start entering adjustments to income by typing directly on the black lines or linking to the appropriate forms. And for this lesson, we'll enter information on line 20 for student loan interest deduction. Though this is a direct entry field, we also have the option to link, which in this lesson, we'll click that link icon. In the entry links dialog box, we'll select the new 1040 worksheet 2, then click OK. Here we can enter separate amounts for the amount the taxpayer and the spouse paid towards their own student loan interest. Then if we return to schedule one, we'll see that total amount listed on line 20. Click Schedule 2 in the Forms tree. Here we can link to other tax forms such as AMT or reconciling any advance payments of the premium tax credit. And in Part 2, you can add any additional taxes paid. Click Schedule 3. And in Part 1, we can link to any additional non-refundable credits. Or in Part 2, link to other payments and refundable credits. All of the information we enter on Schedules 1, 2, and 3, as well as any forms we link to, all flows back to Form 1040, page one and page two. Now let's look at the state forms. Click the Georgia 500, page one. All of the relevant information from the federal forms flows through to the state forms as well. And you can simply complete any remaining red required fields. In this case, we need to mark yes or no to the question, did the taxpayer's address change since last year's return? For this lesson, we'll click no. Next, we'll click Georgia 500, page five, since it still has a red exclamation point in the forms tree, indicating there's a required field we need to complete. Here, we need to select whether or not we are electronically filing the return, and we'll click yes. Then we need to specify how the taxpayer wants to receive the refund. For this lesson, we'll choose paper check. Scroll down 
to indicate whether the taxpayer authorizes the Georgia Department of Revenue to discuss this tax return with the preparer. And for this lesson, we'll click yes. And at the very bottom, the preparer information will also calculate from the federal forms. Use these same steps to input any additional information and complete the rest of the red required fields. For more information on specific forms or adding additional forms, review the other lessons in this module. This concludes the lesson on entering taxpayer data in TaxWise. For more information on preparing returns, review the other lessons in this module.